Let's talk about gear. And dogs. <laughs> you did so good. You did so good for just a second. It was obviously a joke. Uh, this is not an old tripod accidentally put in a Manfrotto box. Uh, this is an old tripod that I've had for a very long time. It's a very inexpensive tripod and I've put it through the ringer. And this is a story with a lot of my gear. Whether it's inexpensive tripods or cameras that I got a few years uh, outside of the manufacturing date, uh, I've always managed to find myself with gear that's just not up to date, not, you know, riding any modern trends or anything like this. The camera I've been using until recently is a Pentax K52S. And this is a camera that was manufactured in 2012. I bought it new in 2014. And at the time when I purchased it, I didn't actually have any Pentax lenses except for the ones that were on my old film cameras. But because it was still a K-mount system, I put them on my digital camera and was able to shoot that way, and I made it work for me. Before the Pentax, I was shooting a Nikon D40, and a picture that I sold just two weeks ago was actually shot on that system, an old, uh, an old D40 with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And I think this day and age, we get too caught up with having to have the most modern gear, you know, the most megapixels, the most this, the most that, the widest, fastest glass, and we don't really take the time to stop and learn how to use our gear. Even this vlog, I started filming it with just everything that I already had. Uh, the Pentax K52S and my old tripods and just whatever I could do to get by with because that's just what I had available. Only recently did I get a new tripod and a ball head and that was because I got myself a new camera. Again, second hand, I, I bought this camera I'm currently filming on the Nikon D800 from a friend of mine. He had a few cameras, he didn't need this one anymore, and he sold to me for a great price. And I even got the lens for free from another friend of mine. It was an older lens, it wasn't being used, but when you have to make do with maybe less sufficient gear than you'd like, you learn it. You learn it really well, and you learn it to the absolute most of its ability. When I got my Pentax, I was really into street photography. And again, shooting on a manual lens. And I didn't quite understand it at first. Uh, I didn't understand how the camera worked with manual lenses, but I got some incredible, incredible photos. Some of my favorite photos of all time were taken on that camera. Fast forward a few years, and I'm a lot more proficient with the camera. I have invested in a couple extra lenses and I shot everything. I shot weddings, I shot landscapes, I shot portraits and performances and festivals, and even found myself going viral online as a direct result of this camera. A uh, quick story behind this photo. The house I was living at was being threatened by a wildfire, and although the neighborhood was starting to become evacuated, I was relying on my previous photojournalistic experience and I went up on the roof and I was watching the bomber planes, the communication planes, and uh, when I was a photojournalist uh, here in Northern California, I really learned to read the, the language of the spotter planes and the bomber planes and usually they'd uh, do a couple passes, uh, I think as a test, as a test run, um, in order to get the trajectory right. Well, so I, I was up on the roof, and the 
Bomber plane had done two passes, and I thought, okay, the third time he's coming in a little bit extra low, I'm going to start taking pictures now. The plane at the last minute veered 90 degrees to the left and directly towards me as he dumped some, I don't know how many thousands of gallons of fire retardant onto the blaze and subsequently onto my house and myself and my friends. But that's a story for another day. But that camera put me front and center there and I was getting all sorts of emails from people who wanted interviews about the story and about the, the camera itself and I thought it was a bit funny because at the time when that fire happened the Pentax K1 had recently come out and uh, here was this story that was kind of taking the limelight from a camera that was really out of date and it was an APS-C sensor and all of this but it was still you know making headlines and I think it's a perfect metaphor for our, our sort of gear acquisition syndrome. Here was this camera that stood up to the, the test of time, so to say, and got a great photo, and a photo that really intrigued a lot of people. Chase Jarvis pretty famously said, the best camera is the one you have on you. And I think it's an important mentality to have, but with today's latest and greatest technology making photos more and more easy, uh, we're relying more on the gear than our ability to take photos. I think we need to focus more on learning our gear. We have to understand our gear's limitations and continually push them to that point to get the most out of them if we need. I'm not talking about taking snapshots of your family in the park. I'm talking about taking intentional photos, whether they're portraits, whether they're landscape photos, you know, star photos at night, anything. I want to thank you for listening to me ramble yet again, and I hope this acts as an inspiration to you to focus more on getting out and getting the photo, and less about being held back by the idea of not having sufficient gear. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Chase Jarvis pretty famously said, <laughs> <laughs>